with the eighth chapter of Summer of the Monkeys by Wilson Rawls. Jay Barry and Rowdy came home all bit up by monkeys, and Daisy put on her nurse outfit and helped clean them up and help them out for a few days. She was joking about them having hydrocephalia, which we know as rabies, and I feel like I've been a little unfair to you guys about this book. I've been looking up stuff about Wilson Rawls and his history and how he really worked with kids as a motivational speaker. And I, I, I really like the, the Daisy character. Um, I can't create that character, you know, the character of a 14-year-old girl as well as my fourth grade teacher who read us this book when, God, she was 61, 63-ish when she read it to us. I can't remember exactly how old she was, she was 63, so more in the 1930s, so just imagine this, you know, 63-year-old woman doing this great character of the 14-year-old girl with the twisted leg nursing her brother, um, and I I will try to do more justice to the, the feelings in this book. It's very funny, but it will become a, a book about feelings in a little while, probably a longer introduction than you wanted to this part of the chapter, but that's what you get. So, Jay Barry is trying to get his dog, Rowdy, to come out from under the house. Getting down on my knees, I peered back under the house. I could see Rowdy way back in the farthest corner. Come on, boy, I coaxed. I'm not going monkey hunting. I'm going to the store. Do you want to Don't you want to come along? I could hear a lot of tail thumping, whimpering and whining, but Rowdy still refused to come out. I begged and I pleaded. I promised him everything from fried rabbit to a red squirrel stew. But it did no good. Disgusted and feeling terrible, I took off down the road for Grandpa's store. I hadn't gone far when here came Rowdy, wiggling all over and tickled to death. Once he had seen that I wasn't going to the bottom where those monkeys were, he was willing to come along. You should be ashamed of yourself, Rowdy, I said. A great big dog like you, scared of a little old monkey? I really didn't mean what I had said to Rowdy, because way down deep I was just as scared of those monkeys as he was but I was still determined to catch every last one of them. Grandpa must have been inspecting me, because just before I got to the store, he came out onto the porch and looked down and looked down the road. On seeing me, he sat down in his favorite chair and waited for me. As I walked up, he peered at me over his glasses and said, Well, how did it go? It didn't go so good, Grandpa, I said as I leaned the net up against the store. Didn't the net work? Grandpa asked. Oh, yes, it worked, Grandpa, I said. It worked just like you said it would. I caught two of the little monkeys, but they got away from me. Got away, Grandpa said. How did that happen? I really don't know how it happened, Grandpa, I said. One minute I had two in the net, and the next minute they were gone. I was pretty busy at the time and didn't see exactly what did happen. Grandpa arched his eyebrows and said, Busy? What were you doing? I was fighting monkeys, Grandpa, I said. That's what I was doing. They were eating Rowdy and me up. Look! Stepping over close to Grandpa, I showed him the scabbed-over monkey bites on my arms and legs. Grandpa looked me all over, let out a long whistle, and said, Boy, they sure did get a hold of you, didn't they? Did it hurt? Hurt? I said, I'll say it hurt. It made me sick. I've been in bed for three days. I never was so sore and stiff in all my life. If you think a squirrel can bite, you ought to get bit by a monkey. How did all this happen? Grandpa asked. Tell me about it. I told Grandpa everything that had happened from the time I jerked the blue ring on the net until the monkeys got away. I ended up by saying, I don't believe those monkeys can be caught. Oh, yes, they can, Grandpa said. Just remember what I told you about animals. There never was one that couldn't be caught. And always keep more than one iron in the fire. I know, Grandpa said, but I'm afraid of things going like they have. We're going to run out of irons, and the fire is going out. Grandpa laughed, got up from his chair, and said, <laughs> Come here, I've got something to show you. I followed Grandpa into the store, and watchfully reached up on a shelf and picked up an envelope. Waving it in front of my face, Grandpa grinned and said, <laughs> Do you know what this is? I shook my head. This is a letter from an animal trainer down in Florida, Grandpa said. Here's the fellow that trains the animals for that circus. He trained that hundred-dollar monkey. He did, I said. He must be a darn good trainer, because that is the smartest monkey in the world. 
I didn't see him do it, but I'm pretty sure that while those other monkeys were clawing on Rowdy and me, he sneaked in and let those two out of the net, those two in the net loose. I wouldn't doubt that a bit, Grandpa said. He's smart enough, all right. Did you know the, that monkey has a name? A name, I said, very surprised. Who ever heard of a monkey having a name? I never gave it much thought, Grandpa said. But after I read this letter, I got to thinking practically all tame animals have names. Take your old milk cow. Her name is Sally Gooden. Your dad's two mules are Fred and George. My buggy mares are named Molly and Bertie. I know, Grandpa, I said, but that monkey's not tame. He's as wild as a hoot owl, Grandpa frowned and said. I don't believe that monkey is as wild as you think he is. Once an animal has been tamed, he doesn't ever forget it. What's that monkey's name, Grandpa, I asked. According to what the trainer said in his letter, they call him Jimbo, Grandpa said. Jimbo, I said laughing out loud. Who ever heard of a name like that? Anyhow, Grandpa said, that's his name. Grandpa asked, what good's it going to do us knowing his name? It might do a lot of good, Grandpa said. This trainer says that if you could make friends with that monkey, you would probably do, he would probably do anything you wanted him to. Make friends with him, I said. Grandpa, I don't think the trainer knows what he's talking about. Why, you couldn't make friends with that monkey in a hundred years. I don't know, Grandpa said. The trainer seems to think you could, and he should know. He says to offer him something to eat, call him by name, and talk to him. It might be worth a try. After all, you have everything to gain and nothing to lose. Nothing to lose, I said. Grandpa, if I got close enough to that monkey to offer him something to eat, I could lose my arm. He's got teeth like a pitchfork. Oh, I don't think you have to worry about that, Grandpa said. From what you've told me, he's about the only monkey in that bunch that hasn't tried to bite you. Thinking back on everything that had happened, I realized that Grandpa was right. By golly, Grandpa, you're right, I said. That Jimbo monkey hasn't tried to bite either Rowdy or me, but he sure doesn't mind sticking the... Sicking those little monkeys onto a fella. Do you think that this Jimbo monkey is the leader of the pack? Grandpa asked. Oh, I know he is, Grandpa said. Those little monkeys won't do a thing until he tells them to. That's fine, Grandpa said. If you can make friends with Jimbo and get him to follow you, the little monkeys would probably follow him, and you might be able to lead the whole caboodle right into the corn crib. Grandpa made everything sound so simple, and I was feeling so good I would have been willing to try to make friends with a grizzly bear, but there were a few things in my mind that I needed to get straightened out. Grandpa said, I know that Jimbo monkey hasn't tried to bite me, but I can't believe he's looking for any friends. In fact, I believe he's got it in for Rowdy and me. He sure acts like it. No, Grandpa said. I don't think Jimbo has it in for anybody. His trainer says he likes people, especially youngsters. He probably thinks you've been playing games with him. Another thing, Grandpa, I said. What could I say to that monkey to make friends with him? I don't know how to talk to a monkey. You might try talking to him like you do to Rowdy, Grandpa said. Offer him an apple and call him by his name. Don't act like you're trying to catch him. Just act like you're trying to be friends with him. Do you really think it'll work, Grandpa, I asked. You can't ever tell, Grandpa said. It might... I think it's worth a try. I thought a second and said, Okay, Grandpa, I'll give it a try. If I thought I could catch those monkeys, I'd be willing to try anything. I sure want that pony in a twenty-two, and this is the only chance I'll ever have to make enough money to get them. Looking up at the sun, Grandpa said, It's early yet. I think you have time to try it out today. I'm going to, Grandpa, I said, just as soon as I get home. As I turned to be on my way, I thought of something. Grandpa, I asked, how come that animal trainer wrote to you? Grandpa grinned and then said, That's one of those extra irons I was telling you about. I wrote a letter to those circus people and got an answer from the animal trainer. I smiled and said, I figured it was something like that, Grandpa. I don't know how I can ever pay you back for all you've done for me. I'll tell you how you can pay me back, Grandpa said. Just catch those monkeys and I'll be well paid. Now if you can't make friends with that monkey... Don't let it bother you too much. If this doesn't work, we'll try something else. Grandpa said, If I can't make friends with that monkey, it won't be my fault because I'll sure be trying. I just hope no one sees me down in those bottoms talking to a monkey. Why, they would put me in the crazy house sure as shooting. Grandpa laughed and said, <laughs> Oh, I don't think anything like that's going to happen. 
you wouldn't sound half as bad talking to a monkey as some of these farmers do talking to their mules. I laughed and said, I know what you mean, Grandpa. Sometimes I listen to Papa talking to our mule while he's working them. If I was a mule and somebody yelled gee and haw at me all day long, I wouldn't do anything. I'd have a runaway every 15 minutes. Grandpa said, you have to let animals know who the boss is or they'll take advantage of you. Well, I said, I better be on my way. I'm anxious to see if I can make friends with that monkey. I am too, Grandpa said. Let me know how you come out. And that is the end of chapter 8.